Hi, everybody, and welcome to 24 Hours 2020, our first check-in, our first guest speaker, and our first event. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I know it's only been an hour. You guys are probably going crazy and furious, but um, Mark Acklin, a very special guest judge, is here today who's going to help give you some tips on how to gear your stories to a 30 seconds and uh, not overthink things, but also choose the right one. Um, Mark Ackland um, is, um, he's been in the animation industry for over 20 years. Uh, he's gained notoriety through his efforts as a writer and character designer on various movies and television series, including SpongeBob SquarePants, Mickey Mouse, the Book of Life, The Lego Movie, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And he's currently storyboarding uh, as an artist on Peanuts. Welcome, Mark Acklin, to 24 Hours. Thanks. Woo! <laughs> I just woke them up. Hours. All right. Oh, my gosh. Um, before we get into all the fun with Mark Acklin, uh, we have a special announcement from someone that Mark uh, recently worked with. Um, the direct one of the directors of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Peter Ramsey. Mark, is there anything you want to say about working with Peter? Uh, he's just a class act. He's he's amazing. So, whatever he says here, just soak it up and and throw it into your film because the guy he's a genius. So, so enjoy. Ben, take it away. Hey everybody, this is Peter Ramsey, one of the directors of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say congratulations to you all. Uh, it's great that you're all participating in the 24 Hours Animation Contest for students. Uh, you're gonna get a taste of what it's like to uh, work in the animation industry uh, by uh, giving it your heart and soul and uh, everything you've got to create something. So, uh, I want to wish you guys good luck. I want to say stay hydrated, have some good healthy snacks, uh, keep your spirits up, try not to uh, you know, pull each other's heads off as you're having creative discussions. Um, and uh, just want you to know that so much, of, uh, so much of what goes into creating is decisions made in the moment. You know, it's, it's not all about stuff that takes hours and hours and months and months to do. A lot of it is reacting to what's right in front of you and, and the ideas that come up from bouncing off other people uh, just in a moment. So uh, once again, congratulations. You're all doing something really cool. Have fun. Uh, enjoy being creative together. Uh, I know there's like, what, 1,500 of you guys from all over the world. So uh, know that there's people all over the place who are going through all the same challenges and heartaches and struggles as you are at this very moment. Uh, but, uh, you know, have fun together and do great work. And, uh, you know, you're going to learn how much great creativity comes out of living in the moment and uh, kind of working on the edge. So good luck. I know some great stuff is going to come out of it. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Peter Ramsey. That was so amazing, so heartfelt, so real. Um, so much great information on how to how to make it through and work together. So um, we really, really appreciate you taking the time to do it for doing that. Um, and now we're going to shift to Mark Ackland. Um, Mark, how are you? Good. Everything's good. I, I feel good. <laughs> Your health is good. You're you're in quarantine. My health is good. I'm not in quarantine. Okay. Uh, I'm healthy. I'm good. I'm just storyboarding all day. 
Uh, thankfully, I don't have to do it for 24 hours straight, like like some people I know. But uh, kudos, though. I, I commend you. But yeah. you definitely stayed up before for long nights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you get in the animation industry, it's 24 hours a day. I don't know if anybody knows this, but so so get used to it. But yes, a lot of a lot of late nights in animation for sure. And how do you kind of keep yourself motivated? Like, especially when you get tired, you've got a deadline coming up and it's you're, it's kind of late in the night. What kind of tips and tricks do you do? Uh, music, you know, is a big one. Like, I, I find that sometimes when I'm storyboarding a sequence, especially if it's late at night, um, I'll try to find music that uh, I, I feel fits with the, the sequence that I'm working on. And I, I find that helps be like the little bit of a soundtrack as, as I'm animating or, or as I'm storyboarding this thing. And that kind of helps, helps keep me awake and, you know, keep me focused through the night. But uh, that's my biggest late night tip. That and coffee. Coffee. Without coffee. a doubt, coffee. Yeah. And what about like if you've got like a long stretch ahead of you, are there things you do uh, throughout? Is there like getting up, exercise, things like that? No, no exercise. <laughs> but no, what I, what, you know, especially talking when we're when we're dealing with a, a tight, uh, a, a tight time frame, is often what I'll do is if I, if I have a sequence ahead of me that I know has to get done, um, I will I will try to get through this thing relatively quickly and just hit hit all the emotional points and get through it, and if I'm lucky enough to have time at the end, I'll go back through it and tighten it up. So. That would be a word of advice to to uh, your students here is just let's just get a pass of this thing as quickly as possible. You can, you can fine tune it later, but that's better than half of it being done really perfect as opposed to the whole thing just being done and cohesive and as, as like a little film. So that's generally mm-hmm. how I like to work, you know, in, in, almost in layers. Like you do a rough pass and you keep kind of tightening up and, and fixing it and cleaning it up as you go along just so you can get your your kind of message out even if it's just small little quick thumbnails just something to communicate where they're going yeah like i'm i'm really guilty and i'm guilty of this of like i'll do a drawing and if i if i don't like it it'll kill me not to fix it right there but you have to fight that temptation and just get it through because you know one drawing is such is just such a small little piece in your film so to spend all this effort on this one thing, and it's, it, it could pass by in a couple of seconds. So you just want to get everything out, and then go, and then you can go back through, and you know, hopefully you'll have time to make that drawing really pretty later. But you know, people people are are trying to watch. They want to see a film. They don't want to see a pretty drawing. You know, so they they want to see a, a film put together. And you're 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 a storyboard artist, a director, but also a character designer. So. Is that like putting on different hats sometimes? Like that that urge to kind of get that drawing right. Can you do that more as a designer as opposed to boarding? Or yeah, yeah, maybe I haven't done designs in, in quite a while, but that's definitely definitely you know when you're when you're a designer, your job is obviously to design design a character or, or a background, and um, you could spend all day on like a few characters. Whereas when you're storyboarding, you know. You just don't have that time, so it's it's almost a bit of a hindrance if you've been a designer because you're used to just like like micro focusing in on, on on little areas and cleaning them up. Whereas storyboarding, it's like you just gotta hope that what you're drawing is enough information there that when it gets to the designer, he or she will be able to kind of you know round the edges and figure it out. So um, so yeah, yeah. And then when you're getting a scene done, like, you you know, you've either gotten the script, you've had a conversation with the director, and you kind of storyboard out a quick pass of the scene. Do you kind of, like, do your own self-edit before you pitch? And then when you pitch, um, does things change automatically? Like, because you're communicating it now in a pitch in a different way? Like, kind of, I'm, I'm trying to think about how to communicate to the team's at what point do they pitch versus how do they know if their idea is working or not? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't spend a whole ton of time second guessing your work. You know, I think that, you know, if you have a story in mind, I think you, what you have to do is, is, as a, at least as a storyboard artist or a director is 
like almost like watch this script or story in your mind and picture it as an already existing movie. And how would you how do you picture this script going? These and then you just gotta kind of translate that to the board and and again like don't don't spend a lot of time, um, especially when you're working with a team, uh, like like questioning what you're doing, you just get a pass out because this is a collaborative effort. So, so even if you went back and changed it exactly how you wanted, you're working with a group of people and they're all going to have their kind of say in it as well. So uh, again, I would just stress, especially when you got only 24 hours, just get the thing out, you know, get it in front just so you can show people and then you can collaborate with everybody. And that way you're spending kind of less time fine tuning for yourself and you'll have more time to, get everybody's input and, and kind of, you know, f fine tune it with a lot of, you know, I'm guessing very creative and strong voices in the room, which will make the film stronger. Right. So. Nice. And then when you get ideas, do you get them from drawing? Like is it, will you sit and think about an idea first and then draw it? Or will you just go right to the drawing table and start drawing? Um, <clears throat> well, I, the way, I, the way I work is, um, like, I, you know, I think just what everybody draws digitally now, but I find there's a hindrance with drawing digitally because you can zoom in and you can zoom out and you can, they can just copy and paste this little thing. There's all these little noodly things that add up over time, like as far as eating your time. So I'll always like, I'll always just sketch everything out like really, really rough and simple on paper. Nice. Just because it's so unforgiving, you know, it's it's literally just these are just like throwing my ideas down, and it's almost to a point where I could show this to, this to somebody, they might not even be able to understand what it means. But to me, I get that okay, I want to do this shot, I want to do this pose, and I find that's the fastest way for me, um, without getting too noodly in the digital realm first, and then I'll. And then I'll do it all digitally once I'm kind of happy with the with the way things are are working on paper. Nice. And and after the conversation with the director or whoever you're talking to, then you can kind of formulate it more and then start noodling it more. Well, yeah. Once the director says it's all terrible, start over, do it again. <laughs> Which is another reason why you don't spend a lot of time on this stuff. Just like get your ideas out there because there's a very good chance. Not in not not necessarily because they they don't like what you did, but there's been a, a ton of times I've pitched a board and either just between me getting the script and me pitching it, the script is completely changed or just in the pitch, the director will come to a realization that, Oh, you know what? Now that, now that I see it, it would be better done this way. So it's not even a matter of whether or not they like your work. It's just, this is a collaborative effort. It's a creative effort and it's ever changing Like, especially in features, um, the movie will be reboarded, oh my God, seven, eight times completely from beginning to end. And, and the, what, what, what was the script to, to the final point just gets completely torn apart and, and, and moved around just in the storyboard phase, you know? Um, it's, it's when storyboard phase is when you can tell if what's working, you know? Uh, on the paper, you can read it and go, oh, everything work, works fine, but once it's up on on reels and stuff, it really shows you what your story problems are and your pacing problems are. And so, and so again, it's one of those, it's one of those early uh, parts of production that if done properly and you have the time that will solve a lot of problems for you in the long run. Um, and then would you recommend that people get it up kind of in an animatic as well sooner than later, just to see yeah. the timing as, as, as fast as possible get that get it up into animatic as fast as possible especially because this is a 30 second film so yeah. you know like a joke or anything can go by super quick yeah. or it, it might take longer than you think yeah e even if the drawings are crude or super rough get it out and you'll get an idea of your timing and you'll start seeing what works and what doesn't work and then you can you'll probably have to go back and reboard things and recut it again but the faster you can get your your animatic done then i think the the stronger you know your film will be and the more time you'll have to fine tune your film and because these guys are work or people are working in teams of five um they're going to have five different sets of ideas you know you've worked in teams before and in groups how do you 
know how to settle on an idea that it works best, basically. Um, I found in, in my experiences, you know, I'll, I'll sit there with, I'll, I'll come with a story, and then I'll, I'll, I'll find, you know, a, a group of friends that I that I trust very well, and we'll sit there, we'll, 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 um, we'll talk to the story, and generally, you know, the majority of the people will lean towards the best ideas or the, the funniest ideas, or it's it's almost like you're showing it to a mini audience. So if you're showing a film to an audience and you see their reaction to something, if they're laughing, okay, well, there's a good chance this is going to be funny. If they're, you can tell they're emotional about something or they're excited about something, that, that that's a good point. But the second, you know, the majority of the people are kind of like, eh, I don't know. Then I think you, you know, you have to trust the people you're working with and really, you know, and there's times when I've, I've done this process and there's been a thing I've been in love with that I think is so funny and, and, and the group of people I'm working with don't and you kind of, it's the thing working with the group, you got to let it go. And, and ultimately, I found that generally they, they were right. Like, the, uh, you know, especially if you're working with a group of people that, that you trust and that, you know, you, you, you appreciate. You know, I find that's it's different if you don't respect the people you're working with. That's a totally different story. But hopefully all these groups, you know, today are, are, are people that respect each other and appreciate each other's ideas and um, and then you'll run into that that problem. And if if they can't agree, it's just like a fight to the death. Is that the next way that storyboarders do it? Yeah, you you you, you make a ring, and everybody's got to get in it, and the last person standing gets to decide what happens. Basically, makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark, um, we're we're gonna take some Q and A from the audience if they have any pretty soon. But before we do, is there anything that you want to say to the groups um, in terms of tips or tricks or last minute advice as they get through this crazy contest? Um, just, I guess, especially at the beginning, don't be precious about anything, about any ideas or any designs. Um, just, again, get the thing up, what they call getting up on reels, is getting your animatic out, um, it, I think is probably the most important thing. Um, but also, just like, have a lot of fun you know the, the reason why we do animation is because it's it's fun and engaging and um and the, and there's nothing better than seeing something that is doesn't exist and then it's 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 done and it's beautiful and it's been a collaborative effort between everybody and just last year was the first time i was a judge and i was like blown away by the films that i saw and, and not even not even like well, I'm blown away that these students pulled this off. I'm, I'm just blown away. Like, I, I couldn't do this stuff in 24 hours. So it's it's pretty amazing, and I can't wait to see everybody's films. I'm, re I'm really excited. Awesome. Christina, do we have any questions from the audience? So far, the only question that I've seen on the YouTube chat was about the uh, screen size, which 1920 by 1080 is a good size to go for. Um, and then on the Facebook page, we'd had some questions about the uh, check-ins. Did you want to answer why we want them to check in with us again, Aubrey, since there's a little confusion after the first stream? You got it. And while I'm answering this, if all of you are watching have some questions for Mark Acklin while we have them, uh, type them in the chat and we will get to them. Um, so the idea with the check-ins, everyone, is to see um, all the teams and how you're doing. Um, so um, really just um, join the, the group, um, write out questions if you have them, but then post pictures of your team um, and anything you guys are, you know, any moments you guys are having. If you have a video of a discussion that you thought was interesting, even an argument like Mark's idea of getting you all in the ring and fighting to the death, get that on video. Why not? Um, really just show us like what your experience is and who your team is. Cause the more we get to know you and your teams, um, I think the more people will be excited about, um, what we do in this contest as well. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Definitely. Thank you, Aubrey. Um, we got another question from Facebook, which was a quick question about the time timing with the title card. So your guys' film has to be 30 seconds title card does not count towards that uh any Correct. other specification you want to give them on that pretty much covers it no, no okay well just, then 
just as long as uh, the title card is the exact title card we provided, there's no artwork on it, nothing else, just the t team title, and it lasts for three seconds, it won't count towards the 30 seconds of the film. And it can be any plain face uh, typeface. It doesn't need to be Helvetica specifically, right. but yeah. Times New Roman, Courier, whatever you guys feel like. Some, something plain, nothing crazy. Uh, we have a movie. question from Helena Garcia for Mark. Any advice on telling a story coming from the YouTube chat? Um, I, I think, you know, the stuff that tends to be the most personal tends to be the most truthful. And that's when you get the most, I think, emotional uh, stuff out. Um, and, you know, it never hurts for for something to be relatable, you know. And um, But generally, I think if you're telling a, a personal story, I think, you know, it will ultimately be be relatable to, to other people. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's my best advice, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that for what Mark said. Um... You know, because everyone is in a different region around the world, um, you will all have totally different experiences dealing with this pandemic. Um, so just let us know how it really was and maybe start the conversations with your team about how it was for you individually and see if there's anything common that you want to share. You know, um, a lot of times people resort to comedy, which is totally fine and great. You know, you get a great reaction in a short manner. Um, you know, we're used to telling a joke which has a setup and a punchline. Um, but don't feel like you have to do comedy just because it's animation. You know, some of the strongest films we've seen in 24 hours are more on the poignant side, you know? So what about the short time frame, Mark? Like you've worked on, you know, longer films, but you've also worked on short films and even short sequences. How can you uh, help them in terms of telling something that's really only going to last 30 seconds and not to, you know go compli too complicated with it yeah i mean i don't think i've ever done a 30 second piece really that's that's that is a like not only do you only have 24 hours but you gotta tell a story in 30 seconds that's a, a pretty big one but um but i don't know i i think that um if you could um introduce your character in, in the fastest way possible you know in the most clever way possible and and just make sure that uh you feel something for for that character, you know, which is, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, it's like you could do beginning, middle, end in 30 seconds is, is, is a tricky one. And I think those tend to work best for probably comedic, you know, cause you kind of set up a joke and then give, give them punchline. You can do it in 30 seconds. I think for the stuff, it's a little more dramatic. Um, it's, it's like a slice of life kind of thing where I think it could, it could just be a moment, a moment that's affected you that doesn't necessarily need like a solid beginning, uh, beginning, middle, and end, but is is just like um, a, a, a moment of a moment of your life that uh, you know. I, I'm, it's 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 funny because like you try to give this advice, but you gotta be a little general because it's it's yeah. being spread across so many people. But um, all this oh, is like seconds is tricky. So <laughs> no, I like I. I, I, I like that. Like thinking about a moment or an emotion that you felt during this time and how do you capture that in, yeah. in a 30 second piece? Um, you know, I, when watching like the stuff you've done, say for the Mickey Mouse shorts or even um, Spider-Man, even though they're longer films, you're so good at kind of doing business in a moment that shows so much character, you know, like... I remember that one scene you did where Mickey Mouse like took off his ears and he, he, you know, it was like the bullfight one. And I, for, I forget exactly what happened, but he took off his ears and you, there was no moment where he was just sitting there doing nothing. Right. Um, how do you like, I don't know. How do you come up with that stuff and decide what you're going to do in any given moment? I don't know. Especially, especially the shorter form stuff. You just got to make sure there's uh, there's there's just a little fat on it, you know, um, that that everything a character does or says or 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 a shot does or says just has to be meaningful. You know, that's the tricky thing with doing something as short as 30 seconds is that you got to make sure every one of those 30 seconds counts. And I mean, it's it's, you know, the Mickey Mouse thing. I mean, it's different for for every project. It depends on kind of what's put in front of you but th that's the tricky thing with being i think a director and filmmaker is is how do you take this idea 
and um, and ha- have had the most impact and the most emotional impact and and so that everything reads and everything um, and, and you just you're just not wasting any time, you know. And that's not to say you have to jam a whole bunch of stuff into three seconds, but just making sure that um, that thirty seconds is, is just is just used to push push your point across, you know. Um, yeah, it's 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 tricky. I mean, it's really it's a really tricky thing, you know. Yeah. No, but I like what you're saying. I think if if they have one thing they want to say, but within that, if they're kind of leading us to that with with a character moment or a thing that the character does, um, it kind of works together, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 movement, it's timing, it's color, it's all, all that stuff. Those are those are the tools you have in your tool belt to get an emotional reaction out of somebody watching watching your film, you know. And and every one of those is is just as important as, as the other thing, you know. Wow, that's awesome. Um. It looks like we have one more question. Specific details about universal experience slash emotion. Universal experience and emotion. Hmm. Well, for that, I mean, it generally goes back to like, like primal. You got to think of primal. That's you know, like everybody relates to caveman. Okay, there's fire. It's hot. Don't touch it. You know, uh, watch out. Spiders are gonna bite you. Fall off that, you know, you have to think back about um, if someone if someone hurts somebody you love, that's a primal thing, you know. It's 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 und- it's almost like universally undeniable. If someone hurts the person you love, you get hurt by it. You want to do something about it, and I think that's what I mean when I'm saying relatable. They don't have to be as extreme as that, but everybody has, fa- you know, everybody's got a family of some sort. Everybody has 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 had a life experience, whether you're a, a child or an adult. You ha- you've had experiences that I think everybody has ha- relates to through a certain age, and um, I don't know. Again, again, a tricky thing. But I think if you think with the most primal, you know, human human emotions and and, and and human experiences, that's where you get the universal kind of experience. If that if that makes any sense. Yeah, I love that. That was great, Mark. Um... I think we're going to um, transition to our check-in period. Um, so I want to uh, thank Mark Acklin, seriously, for all this time. Uh, um, no one can bribe you right now in the chat or send you any details for your judging their pieces. And you won't know whose pieces it is anyway. So we just I'm getting really... paid for this, though, right? Like, you're pay- are oh. you paying me for this? Or do I Look, invoice? Um, oh, there's, well, there seems to be some static. Weird. Oh. I, you... Oh, no. <laughs> Great. And... You. Good luck, everybody. Can't wait to see your films. Thanks, buddy. Great to see you, and we'll be chatting soon. Yeah, we'll see ya. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. That was Mark Acklin. That was amazing. Hopefully, you all tuned in and uh, got some great start advice. And now we're going to transition to our check-in. What I'm going to do is have um, Ben uh, share the screen. So we're going to look at the Facebook. It looks like Corgi Bears and Carb Crew from USA have shouted out on YouTube. Hi, you folks. How are you? Um, Let's see where we're at next. I just have to refresh my page. I think all of you should be seeing Ben's Facebook at this point. Is that correct? I'm waiting for a thumbs up from Ben or Christina. So what we're going to do now is we're going to slowly look through the Facebook page and see how you are all doing. Okay, starting at the top, I see, sorry, it's loading. Okay. Um, Sorry, everyone, my page is taking a while to load. Uh oh, it looks like there was an error on your side. Um, we're seeing a video. Okay, it's reconnected. We're seeing a video from Brittany Luke. We are Anna Mation Nation, and it's a video. Hopefully, my computer will play it because uh, 
it's going kind of slow. Um, I don't know, Ben. Can you play it on your side? We've got the team waving. Uh, Animation Nation is waving. I don't. Know, I think they're singing. My sound is not on, so I can't tell. Looking awesome, Team Animation. Thank you. Next, we have um, questions about check-in. We have Rat Den working away, saying my roommates and I are hyped to tackle 24 hours. Rat Den, I think this is uh, Sheridan College, my alma mater. I grew up in Toronto, Canada in Thornhill. I don't know if anyone knows Thornhill. Um, but I have, a, I have a quick story about Rat, rat Den. Um, if you haven't heard, there was something called the Rat's Nest at the Walt Disney Studios. I want to say back in the 70s, um, where um, uh, animation supervisor named Don Bluth at the time uh, apparently uh, walked into this area that was a little messy and said, called it the Rat's Nest. And the people in that Rat's Nest were kind of beginning animators maybe at the time. Um, and it was like Bill Croyer, who later became um, Academy-nominated short animator on Technological Threat, um, supervising animator on Tron. Um, Brad Bird was there. Uh, I think John Musker there was there, director of Moana and Aladdin and Little Mermaid. So it was this amazing hub of these future superstars um, that was called the Rat's Nest. So there's my story for Rat's Den. I don't know if you knew that when you named yourselves, but it's pretty cool. Um, anyone else checking in? I'm going back to the top. I'm going to read out the list of teams. Um, okay. Um, let's see. I've got to pull the team list up, which I don't have in front of me. Sorry. Um, Christina, do you have it in front of you? Oh, you're muted. Ben, can we hear Christina? Sorry about that. I was muted. Uh, we had a couple more check-ins from the Facebook page. Are we still looking at that, Ben? Uh, and then I can I can read off the list of names if, if uh, you want, Aubrey. That'd be uh, great. Yep. Okay, still looking at the Facebook page. So we had a check-in from Team Sell You Cat. All ready to work. Hi, Sell You Cat. Uh, and then let me find the other one real quick. Looks like we have a video and a picture from Alexis Gutierrez. Uh, I don't know what team she's on. Oh, car Carb Crew. Oh, checking in both on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you, guys. Got the hey, Do Not Disturb crew. sign up. Animators at work. Awesome. <laughs> Got some tea, tea on them. standby. I also have a cup of tea that you guys can't see. Um, so, Aubrey, you needed me to find that list of schools participating from our Asian region? Sure. All right. Well, uh, we have the uh, new, new participating school this year. Sorry if we are butchering the pronunciation. Uh, Jamia Milia Islamia, checking in from India. We have Team Animaniac and a VFX team that I can't read your whole thing because I, I don't read Arabic, but we got two teams from that school new for this year. Uh, checking in from Iran, we have University of Tehran, uh, team Tehran Animate. Nice. In from Welcome Taiwan, we got two universities, uh, National Ping Tong University with the team Heartbreaker and Team Yi Huo. Sorry, I don't speak Thai. Hopefully I didn't uh, 
butcher that, or this next uh, university, uh, Sufshin University, got the Team Shu. And then from Ramsit University, Thailand, the home of last year's first place winners, we've got right. teams Agent 007, uh, Awusam. We got for the biggest best, just for research, Team Rainbow Potato, Sheep.zip, and Untitled.psd. So How many are, files are, do you have called Untitled PSD? Oh man, we had this issue on our end earlier today. It was, oh, what, the final file wasn't final final? What do you mean? Final final final. That's final, right. final wasn't the last file we needed? What do you? So I think <laughs> we all can relate to that a little bit. The uh, uh, good, good team names going on there. Let's see, that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 teams from our Asia region. And let me hop back over to YouTube and Facebook real quick, see if we got any new check-ins since we've been live. Uh -uh. Charlie, <laughs> all right, well, we got a team. Christina's looking, I also want to just let everyone know, um, you know, everyone should just be working on story, story, story at this point. And it's really just about getting ideas out. No need to rush it at all. Just get as many ideas out as possible because one, the one you decide on is going to be the one you're going to work on all night. And you don't want to work on something that you don't all love. So make sure everyone gets a voice. Everyone is, is talking and chatting and sharing. And then eventually, you know, even if it's almost midnight and then you nail down your idea, that's fine. Because you'll still have time after that. Yeah, you can, you can adjust the story. You know, on the schedule graphic, we put some loose guidelines for you guys. Those color blocks uh, show like kind of the proportion of your 24 hours you might consider spending on each stage, as it were. And you will notice they do overlap. So you, you might have something come to you once you've uh, started designing your characters or whatever. It might really start to take shape, give, get a life of its own. So you guys can still revise as long as you are agreeing as a team and jiving. Mm -hmm. um, we have an update on Facebook. Team Rat Den checking in again, getting their concepts down. P.S. They are roommates here, so that's why they don't have uh, masks on. They all live in the same household and apparently get along well enough to survive this challenge together. So go team. Uh, we got another post here I'm approving right this moment. We have... Uh, Charlie Chonkers and uh, Chonkening in. I believe the full name of that team is Charlie Chonkers and the Chonk Chonkening Chonk Factory. Yeah. The, the Rechonkening. I'm sorry if I butchered it. It's a <laughs> sequel it's name. to chonk in there a lot. I guess I can look that up um, <laughs> later. But they're checking in with their faces on Facebook. Uh, roll, let's roll, see. roll Doll would be proud, you guys. Roll Doll would be proud. <laughs> Let's see. Did I just see one more? Oh, someone checking in from Ping Tong University, Taiwan. Just approved a post from them. One of our new participating teams, I believe. Uh, looks like they're all able to meet, sitting in the sitting in a circle, brainstorming. Uh, let's nice. see. Good work. Got a good action going on, guys. I love seeing all of these posts. It's awesome to put faces to the participants. We still have yeah, people you know, joining the group. We're all, we're all stuck out here in our own homes, in our own areas, so it can feel kind of isolating. So this is a great way to connect with each other. So thank you for posting, everybody. Yeah, I it looks like... Gonna... Yeah, we're caught up. Okay, we're caught up. Um... We'll just go back to me now, Ben, and we can um, um, wrap this up. Um, I just want to say um, stay safe, stay hydrated, enjoy your um, brainstorm. Brainstorm is kind of the most fun time I have on storytelling. So just have fun with it. Don't feel too stressed out. As Mark said, don't feel anything's precious. Just keep coming up with ideas, topping each other's ideas. Even if you like it, are there ways to plus it a little bit better, just a little bit better? Those winning teams have thought about all details. It's like, what's what's the shot doing? What's the character doing? 
what's the color, what's the motivation. Um, just keep asking the good questions. So you've really worked it out before you start animating. And, um, you know, use the strengths of the team. Start overlapping while some people are boarding, other people are designing. And um, collecting references. Don't forget about that. Just surround yourself with artwork that everyone can see that's related to the mood, the emotion you're going for, the theme. Um, really just inspire yourself. As Mark Acklin also said, maybe bring the music in that is going to help inspire you. So think about the mood you're going for and the, and the feeling you want. And maybe one person can start collecting sounds and, and music that will help inspire the team as well. Um, other artists that you guys like to be influenced by, maybe someone makes a board with different artists. Um, just really surround yourself with this, you guys. Don't, don't feel like you've got to come up with an idea and go. Just, just take your time, let it soak in. It's, it's those films with layers and um, several um, layers of meaning that will um, really ring true with the judges. So um, unless there's anything else, Christina? I think we're going to sign off. So thank you for um, checking in on check-in number one. Thank you, Mark Acklin and Peter Ramsey. And um, our next check-in is uh, coming up at, at 8 o'clock our time. Mm. Yep, 20, 100 hours. That's, uh, I always have to count now. Three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight 8 o'clock. Yeah, 8 o'clock uh, PDT on the, on the West Coast here in California. Um, and um, uh, we're going to have Leslie Hedrick, who's going to come and talk about um, production design and where you are in your stories as well. And we'll have check-in number two for teams in Europe. Enjoy, everyone. We'll see you soon.